Welcome to How to Become a Production SQL Database Administrator. My name is Raphael. In the previous videos, we looked at the one of the HA solutions, which was log shipping. And we demonstrated how to set up a primary server and a secondary server, and then primarily log ship from the primary to the secondary. And we went over that and how to actually fail over from the secondary back to the primary. So in that process, when you create a log shipping HA solution, sometimes you'll have to worry about what's called orphan users. And what orphan users are is when you create a user, a SQL user in the primary server, and when you either log ship or mirror or attach and detach or back up and restore the primary database to the secondary database, you often lose what's called SQL logins. And that becomes problematic because now the SQL login that is uh, associated with this primary server and can log into the server does not lo no longer have what's called the security ID or the SID that resides in the master database of the primary server. So when you transfer this backup and restore database from source to destination, that SID does not come along with the uh, migration of log shipping. So here, when you the sir, when the SQL login tries to access this database, he or she is going to get an error saying that the SQL logging is uh, missing. Therefore, he's an orphaned user, and that's the premise of an orphan user. So we as DBAs, if we if that happens, obviously we have to find out which orphan user there exists, and then we have to re, uh, recreate them here so they can access this server and database. So that's what an orphan user is. It's when you're taking a primary server backup and restore or doing any of these technologies and restoring it here, we're losing the uh, SQL logins here that were in the, prime, in the master database of the primary server. And obviously it doesn't exist here, so we need to correct that. So this is gonna be the demonstration of what a orphan user is and how to correct it. So let's go to our servers now and start this process. So open your server. Make sure obviously the DC is open. Make sure you've got server one connected and make sure also you have server two connected because we're going to be working with two servers. So as you can see here now, if I expand the database right here and refresh it, you'll see I don't have a database called Orphan and I'm going to start from scratch so you have a clear understanding of what's going on. And then if I go to security and if I refresh logins, you'll see I don't have a login called Sandy. So what I'm gonna do right now is just to set up the uh, scenario, and that is on server one, I'm gonna create a database called Orphan. So I'm just gonna highlight this, and I'll provide this for you so you can just follow through. And that's executed. Now if I refresh this, obviously I've got a uh, database called Orphans. Now if I expand that, what I want you to look at is, if I expand the security here and the users and refresh this, I no longer, I do not have a user called Sandy, meaning I don't have a uh, login associated with Orphan's database, and that's fine because we haven't created one. And same thing with here at this point. If I go to the securities of the server, no Sandy is understandable, and that's fine. So next thing I'm gonna do is just gonna, I'm gonna quickly create a table for Orphan's, and I'm gonna just enter some data. So it'll give you this also. So just highlight this and execute it, and there we go. So now that we've got our uh, database, let's look at, so we're, we're here. So now what we need to do is we need to create a login, an SQL login called Sandy. So we have this primary server and we're gonna, in that primary server, I'm gonna create an SQL login and here is the command for SQL login. So obviously it's just uh, use master database, of course, that's where the logins reside. Create login followed by login name with passport password, and then obviously this continue, and I'll be providing that also. So you can go right click and execute. And now if we go to our securities, logins, and refresh it, you'll see that I have indeed a login call Sandy. So, so far so good. So on this server one, we have a database called Orphans, and we have a uh, login call Sandy. So in order to find out which logins and database are, we have to run this, uh, we have to run this um, script from sys, sys logins, which will give us all the list of all the logins, and then sys, uh, sys users, which will give you all the users for the databases. So let's do it one by one and make sure we're highlighting orphans because we want to see what the sys logins are pertaining to that. So if I execute, you can see a list of all the 
logins that are associated with uh, syslogins on this server. And obviously the one we just created is Sandy. And we've also got SQLB, SQLA, uh, SA account, and the various accounts here. Now let's look at the user accounts. So which, where are the users? And as you can see, there are no users for the databases Sandy here because we have not mapped the SQL login to any particular database, in our case, orphans. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a map, uh, create and map Sandy SQL login to the database orphan. So now she can access this database. And the way that you do that is use the create user Sandy for login Sandy. So again, highlight this and execute, and it's successful. So now if I go to the uh, orphans database, and if I go to security, and now remember, I don't see any San Diego, but if I refresh it, there we go. So now we've associated the login Sandy to the orphans database, and she can access this database. So, so far, so good, and nothing is spectacular because we're just setting up the scenario. So the scenario at this point is, actually, let me just run this. And so we want to find out what I said, the security ID for Sandy. And we want to find out through sys logins and sys users. So if I highlight both of the, the both of these commands and execute, you'll see the SID. And obviously this is the association for this server. So just remember uh, 4DA9, 4DA9. One is for the sys login and one is for the uh, database. So these, this Sandy login has been mapped to that user using this SID. Now the whole premise of this uh, example is that in this particular server, server one, this is fine. She can access that database and she can access, log into the server based on this security ID. But when you transfer this entire database or back it up or do log shipping or mirroring, you're basically taking a backup copy of a database and obviously importing it to another physical server. That in that case, we lose one of these. We lose this capability right here. And that's why you have errors. So we're going to fix that. So let's continue. So the first thing I'm going to do now is to emulate a um, copy paste of this database to server two. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to back up this database orphans to our local uh, directory of S. And we've seen that before. So I'm just going to highlight this. And this is simply a backup command to that directory. So if I execute it, that's great. And if I can check it, there it is. And what I want you to do now, obviously, because we're going to be restoring this database from the source server one to the destination server two, I want you to copy that backup and I want you to dump it here. And obviously, as you know, this is the directory for uh, server two. So everything's done here and that's fine. And we know everything is good. So let's continue. So it says copy paste the backup and restore on server two. And notice which logins and users moved with the database. So now I'm going to actually do all this on server two. So step seven, go to server two. And obviously you can copy all this and it's provided for you. So here it is. So now I'm going to restore that database on here. So if I go to server two and expand the database, obviously I don't see orphans. If I go to security and logins, I don't see Sandy. So the first thing I'm going to do is restore the database and execute it. And there it is. So now if I go to database on server two, refresh it, I see orphans database. If I click it and expand security, expand users, you'll see Sandy moves over because Sandy, as far as a user is concerned, is associated with the database level. So we can move the database level, but not the SQL uh, login security. That is uh, server specific and master uh, database specific. So if I go to securities here and, um, and execute it, you'll see that I don't see Sandy on server two. And actually, if, if Sandy was trying to log on, she will not be able to. So let's see if she can. So let's go to connect database, uh, go to SQL authentication, type in Sandy and her passwords is capital. So take that off. Her password is password one, two, three.
And we should get error saying login field for user Sandy. And that's understandable because as I said, the SID has not migrated over to the destination table. And let's look at that now. So uh, rerun the scripts and notice that the database user SID is missing. And even though the database has been moved, uh, she was not part of the source database. Therefore, she's an orphan. We have created this uh, orphaned this SQL login. So now if we're on server two, so let's run up the sys login and sys users script again using that database and let's see what she's missing. Again, we're missing the SID for the login because that is not transferable when you're doing log shipping, mirroring, attaching or detaching database or restoring a database. So right now she cannot access this database and she's gonna get errors and that's what we're doing here. So let's continue. So create and correct the missing SID for login ID on server two. So we're on server two and we're gonna create the login. And again, the password, uh, the script is this to create a login for Sandy for password 1123. Now if I execute it, that's fine. So let's check again. And let's run this script again. And now you'll see that indeed the SQL logins has been created with D9, A9, but you'll notice that these are slightly different. Even though we created a login for Sandy, the SIDs are different. And this is what we have to resolve. This is um, D9, A9, but this is 4D, A9. So they're still mismatching. So we have to correct that uh, SID for uh, Sandy to uh, log onto the server. So, so resolve an orphan user, resync the SID of the user and map to the login. And the way you do that is use the uh, sprock called SP underscore change users, users underscore log update one followed by the uh, username and the login name. And if I run this and execute, that'll be fine. And now let's verify that using that script we've been using. And now we should have identical SIDs. So D9, A9, D9, A9. So that's wonderful. So now can she log on? So that's the true test. So let's go back here. Let's look at Sandy. Sandy. And type in the password, password123. And she should now be able to log in. Remember, she could not log in because of... And there we go. So that indicates how the SID works and we've updated the SID. Now, obviously this was a tremendous amount of process for one user. So in, in obviously in, in a production environment, you're just gonna be handling one or two, you may have hundreds of them. In that case, this process can be obviously tedious where you have to upload and execute these commands one by one. So a better way is what Microsoft uh, gave us is giving us a script. So let's go back to server one and go all the way down. And again, I'll provide this for you because this is a great script and this is it. So now I'm on server one, uh, server one, and this script is a huge sprock. So I'm just gonna execute it and copy it and paste it till, do not copy the ex uh, executable here, just execute it. Once you run that against the server one, then you execute this and see what happens. So what that Sprock basically does is it allows you to, it it actually writes all the, um, all the create logins that you have on this particular server. So if we're looking at now, obviously you can see Sandy's right login there. It's actually captured the actual login and the password of the, of the uh, encrypted password and it's created for you. So now if we had to go to, so let me, let me see if I can create this. So I'm going to copy this, go to server two, paste it. And let's actually delete her first. Let's uh, disconnect. Let's see if we can delete her. And delete. And go OK. It says you the users, and that's fine. Oh, she's currently logged in, so we're going to have to figure that out. So just give me one second here. And let me just pause this because it's a lot easier if I can just do it, and I'll be back in a second. 
And we're back, and only the only thing is, is I discovered obviously um, Sandy had a connection, so you find the S, you execute the SPU sprock, which we've gone over. Once you find her uh, SPID number, which was 55, and use the word kill to kill that uh, physical connection. And then she disputed several uh, testing. Uh, when I was testing, I had a couple of them, so I had to uh, um, kill the uh, connection. So now, if we go back to it, as I mentioned, so we can run this script to find the uh, thing obviously I've deleted as you can see there's no test on server 2 uh, no Sandy so I've deleted her and now I'm going to recreate her and I'm going to recreate her using this particular uh, result set right here that we executed so we executed this and in this particular case I'm just using one login which is Sandy in your case obviously you would have to execute the entire amount of whatever logins that are not finding so I would just ex highlight this execute it and now if we look at the sys login and sys users you'll see that obviously there's she's been created but they're still dissimilar 4d ad or actually they're the same now 4d ad and that's fine so that's a great thing here so that's another way of creating a, a login using that command and actually this command is a great thing to have this particular uh, utility it saves a tremendous amount of time now obviously i gave you the longer version of this what you would have done is execute that sprock get this result set copy the entire result set or the specific logins that are missing and then you would paste them in server 2 and execute it and that'd be that'd be all you'd have to do actually because this will actually transfer all the old SIDs from the old computer or the source computer to the new computer or to the destination computer so this is a great actual script to have but i need you to understand what sql um, orphan users are how to deal with them uh, individually before you get to this script because if you went to an interview and just executed this and explained this they, you may not get a fuller understanding of what orphan users are and how they're created so this is a kind of a long version of uh, ex explaining what a youth orphan user is and how to um, correct it so i think i'm going to leave it here so take a note of this uh, script this is a great one to have and i'll provide that obviously for you so i'm going to leave it here so just uh, to reiterate a couple of things here let's go back to our powerpoint and just to repeat what we talked about and that is if you're executing log shipping as a hs solution mirroring or attaching or reattaching a database or backing up or restore databases then when you would do one of these hs solutions or these two hs solutions then you, there is a possibility that you'll get orphan users and that's basically when you're moving database uh database from source to destination certain sql logins that are associated with the primary database do not get migrated over to the destination and that's called an orphan user and you have to fix that and i've shown you how to fix those those so i think i'll leave it here and uh, we'll continue the next thing the next thing we're going to start obviously is with database mirroring and uh, we're going to start setting up how to do what is database mirroring and uh, talking about database mirroring also. So that's another important uh, part uh, that's interesting to DBS. So I think I'm going to leave it here and we'll continue with the next lecture. So my name is Raphael and this is how to become a production SQL database administrator. See you in the next video.